Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Hearts Fire 4 Kai's Vegas Russia. Let us continue on from where we last left off. So we're in a civil war. Well, we're not in a civil war. We're participating in another country's civil war. We're helping the Greeks defeat the socialists down here because we want them to join our faction. They might end up joining up with theoretically like the Austrians. That that could happen. In which case I wish the socialists would win, but for now, there's a slight chance they'll be our friend. Because they are... They are Republican, I believe. And I don't remember actually what side the Republicans join. I know monarchists are typically Entente. Hopefully Republicans are Russian. Okay, move you over here. I don't know if taking Arta will be enough for us to secure victory. Think. I don't think so. It looks like we probably need one more city. Because you're at currently 27%. I'm delete this whole position. I'm going to send you to this city. Get over there as quickly as possible. Because I can't see your decisions. Republican victory, empower parliament, strong executive. You also have war over... Again, in Italy? I think we stay out of the Italian civil war. I don't think... I, it doesn't benefit us, I think, to join... To throw men in any of these fronts. The Italian Republic is usually going to be pro... Okay, they, there we go. Fantastic. So, Republican Greece gets to survive. We have 16 divisions. We're going to throw you under a brand new leader. Where do I send you is a great question. I actually have no idea. Just to be quite honest with you. Um, I guess I'll send you to Narva like this and you're just going to spearhead your way to Ravel. I don't, I really don't know where else to put you, to be, to be quite honest. We do need more manpower. We have another 24 stack of cavalry on the way. Political advisor, 150. Elusive gentleman's not bad. 5,000 rifles. We want to start getting the officer core up. Ram paddle. I mean, what, what's, we're right now, we're in superior firepower. Which would be none of you. So you get a 10% discount with this guy. 8% organization is pretty good. 30% entrenchment speed is meh. I do think I want this guy, though. Like, that 15-15, as well as getting 0.12 uh, army experience per day is pretty good. Yeah, bring him aboard. We even have, like, a 10-10 uh, tank uh, leader as well. We could have, we could have decent tanks. We could have de decent cavalry as well. Supplies here look like they are completely A-OK. -okay. Rail network is being built quite nice. Can't upgrade you at all. Yeah, I'm just going to really just rebuild all of our... Not rebuild, but just upgrade all of our supply lines. Just to make sure we definitely are not going to be taking any uh, major losses here. National rearmament! Russia may hold ambition to retake the West, but even the most radical Russian nationalists can tell that we're not able to challenge Germany in this state. Her military industry has been neglected, and her economy is not yet ready to outproduce the West. The Russia holds massive potential. Many sacrifices will have to be made before we are able to repudiate the Treaty of Brezlitov. Which is why these sacrifices must be proposed. The government has already introduced a bill for national rearmament, including our austerity policies and the expansion of state-owned armed production enterprises. Even if they will come at a cost. What is Germany's military industry at right now? 55 military factories. We're at 52. So we're actually about 50-50. They have way more dockyards, but we don't care about that. They do have more civilian. But really, the German economy is not that much more powerful than the Russian economy. I, I, I think I think our the nationalists are kind of underestimating us, funnily enough. So let's see. Negative 150... 5% for 4 military factories, 2 civilian.
I mean, it's, it's not bad. Four and two? I'm, I'm just trying to think. I'll take it. Fine. You got me. You got me. I mean, it's 150 political power for six factories versus... 50 political, I guess it's actually the same. It's 50 political power per two factories. 25 each. I see. It's not bad. I mean, it's pretty standard, right? Like, you only develop your country um, focus that we've had before. Each were 25 uh, political power. Like, all these 125 political power each. And on top of that, they cost civilian factories. Instead, this time, they cost... Stability. Which... I mean, kind of sucks. I mean, 5% stability is nice to have. Overall, I mean, firepower. The thing that they're, they all reduce, um... So, it's a 50% recaution in a land doctrine. Before, if you remember, they were... Each type of land doctrine had their own little focus. So, but we can actually kind of ignore that. 10% cheaper guns. Mass mobilizations, faster weapon research. Defense of core territory is kind of garbage. 1% recruited population and 1% cheaper. Honestly, it's not that impressive to me. And you're another 50% chance. Or another 50% reduction. Light tanks. Armor technology. Division experience gain plus 10. Maximum command power increased by 50. It kind of sucks. I, I think that's pretty bad. Yeah, so you're like, why is overwhelming firepower a leadership bonus? I feel like leadership bonus should be under extensive planning, but you give us free logistic and maintenance companies right away. Infrastructure construction speed is not bad. I mean, you also give us... No, what else? It's just, it's just these two. You also give us access to this. Honestly, most of these are kind of garbage. We might go world numbers just for the 10% reduction in infantry equipment cost. Everything else here, I'm more... Eh, it doesn't really seem that crazy or, or useful. And then getting a 1% recruited population bonus is also quite nice. Cover rate's decent. New technology, radar technology... Few times bonus there. I guess we'll just go war of numbers and just get that 10% cheaper equipment. The other tech on it, it just doesn't seem worthwhile. It doesn't seem that good, you know? Oh, yeah. I what I should have done is I should have waited till we had 150 political powers to go for limited conscription. But I guess let's go one, two, three, four and get our extra 1% bonus there. Okay, Monto Video Tree, you love to see it. That means a neutral Brazil. They will not get themselves involved in the war, and that will be a reliable or at least decently safe way to get materials. Because we can ship, I'm assuming at least, we should be able to ship materials from Brazil through the Panama Canal and then to this port over here. And then send them over to Moscow. As opposed to having to ship them this way, which I think is what they're going to default to. But once the war breaks out, we'll just be like, never go through this uh, sea zone. If they want to go up and around to Lake Murmansk, it's fine as well. Just as long as they're not getting destroyed by German uh, German naval units. The Entente, again, Entente with us is a neutral factor. So we don't have to worry about their navy at all. I guess the Dutch, they're still on Benesom. <laughs> Bolivia, Paraguay. I mean, Paraguay doesn't even exist anymore. It's now just Argentina and Bolivia. And I do want to get the railroad guns, which is down in support companies way at the bottom. 127 days. Actually, not that bad. So, fantastic there. We're missing a little bit of aluminum. We don't have any subjects, right? No. Who would we want to trade with? Probably the Pacific State seems reasonable. Due to the fact, again, we, we, we shouldn't ever be going to war with them. 
there's no hostile powers in between us and them. I guess Japan theoretically can become a hostile neighbor. But we'll 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 wait and see on that one. Okay, I think Transmere should be should be an easy easy war. Okay, so everybody's at war here in the, against the SRI. They've already killed the Italian Republic. This is gonna take Milan. And your are cavalry units. Again, I, I do have to sort these out. I'm gonna move you to the border right now with Georgia, just because I don't know where else to put you. Actually, I could put you onto Sylvester. Actually, I'm gonna put you here. Delete this line, delete this line. You, for right now, will just be here. And your job will be to push your way through Crimea and into southern Ukraine. Okay, and there the Canadians getting themselves involved in the second Vil not second Vil the second American Civil War. What are they going to do? Because right now the CSA is fighting a very weird war because they've got, you know, this uh, area in Florida. But once they can maybe take, let's say, North Carolina, Virginia, connect these areas up, it should help the AI out a little bit, I believe. And once the American Union state is dead, they should also have an easier time. But we, we don't want Canada to lose, right? Or, no, we're, we're, I think we're actually completely okay with Canada losing. Field Marshal Kornlov, one of the four officers that led the white movement against the Bolsheviks during the Civil War, has passed away. Kornlov has greatly contributed to post-revolutionary Russian politics. Two weeks of national mourning will be declared as the people prepare for the funeral ceremony, which is... Is he even actually one of our leaders? No, he actually was not in charge of any of our military units. Okay. We don't, we don't gotta uh, worry about any of this stuff. Okay, so, anti-air guns, I'm going to throw you above bombers for now. I'm going to put three of you there. Upgrade our artillery. And upgrade all the artillery pieces first. We have 18,000 rifles, fighters are looking okay. Do you want to go for fighter two? I think they unlock in 1940, but I think we should be... Yeah, 380 days. We're, we're close enough that I think that's completely reasonable. So we'll get that going. Okay, so the Qing's almost killed left KMT. They're doing pretty okay against defending government. The Tsar is dead! His Royal Highness, Kirill Romanov, Tsar, and autocrat of all the Russians that died less than 20, or less than two years after the re restoration. Thankfully, the line of is now clear. His young son, Vladimir, will be crowned as the new Tsar. Were you giving us any bonuses? No. I feel like I have never seen you in my entire life. But welcome, I guess. Well, welcome in charge of uh, Russian politics. Do you have any bonuses or debuffs, I guess? No. Okay, but I, I honestly did not know that this guy even existed. But now we know. And knowing half the battle, or so, so I've been told. Okay, again, I know our manpower is pretty bad. Do you get 2.12 thousand per month, which is I, I think okay. I think that's a good. That's I mean that's five, that's five months for one infantry division. So maybe it's actually not that good. By the way, France, what are you guys up to? Your rad. Everybody actually the entire international has gone radsock. Radical socialist. Is there anybody else? I guess we don't know about... No, you're just, you're just basic syndicalist. Oh, I guess also the SRI technically isn't in the international yet, but come on. We, we know they'll be involved at some point soon. Oh, so the Italian Republic somehow is managing to survive a little bit better than I would have thought they would. You're getting volunteers from Nubia and from Germany. You're getting volunteers from the British and the French. I mean, the number... I mean, they make sense. Get a bonus on you. Research. Defense of the to damage and the garrison in our state occupied by the enemy goes up. Again, you don't do anything. I, I'm like 90% too sure, sure you don't. Like if the Baltic Dutch collapsed, then that focus would be a little bit more useful. If uh, Ukraine decided to go anti Reichs Pact, that would be more useful. But as of right now, it doesn't really do anything. Which is very sad.
And right now, Bulgaria is controlled by the non-partisan regime. Which... Maybe... Is... Neutral? I actually don't... I mean, it said non-partisan. They, they might not take a side in the second Vilkrieg. If they did, I'd prefer them to take the Russian side, obviously. But I, I don't think Bulgaria is, is pro-Russian in that way. Okay, so we got the big old war down here. People's Vanguard against Revolutionary Front. Revolutionary Front, of course, is literally just Guatemala. I can't imagine them surviving too, too long. Okay, we're, we're a few months away. Not a few months. We're probably like a few weeks or days away from the war in the desert. And again, like I said before, we, I think we want us for Egypt, Serenasia, Jamal Shamir, or not Jamal Shamir, Yemen, Iran... We can send, we, can, we might be able to send like 8th Division then. And also send a big chunk of our Air Force to go support the Egyptians. Because the Ottomans, how many aircraft do you guys have? At most 224 uh, aircraft. Which is not a lot. Right now we have a pretty nice, t actually 2.1 thousand not great either. How many planes do we have in storage? Oh well we have hundreds of fighters and, and okay fantastic. This is actually looking good for us. Of course, we don't have any um, manpower to fill up our planes here. Yeah, that's not why I want you on one of these other armies. Okay, you guys are going to crank up to 100. You go to 150. You guys go to 150 as well. I don't think we're making any, um... I don't think we're making any naval bombers. But I don't, I don't really think we need naval bombers. At least not right now. But I might be wrong on that. Do we have any more aces? No, not right now. Okay. And then you should have... A, okay, you have a small contingent of aircraft supporting you. Fantastic. Again, I'm not worried about Transmere. I, I think Transmere will collapse very soon. And once Transmere is done, I guess they could try to... Well, we can't attack them. If we attack them, Japan's going to get involved immediately. However, if they try to press claims during the Vilkrieg, we can go to war. And I think we'll go to war immediately. We have... Honestly, 12 divisions by Transmere should be more than enough to, uh, kill them off. Okay. Kurdistan has rebelled. We'll go Construction 3. I think that seems okay. It's now December. I think you guys are taking a little bit too long. If you could just do the abolishment of the MOJ. Get the war between these two guys going. Do we want to involve ourselves in the war immediately on day one? Okay, well, there's the war. There's the war broken out. Do we want to get involved right now? Also, uh, World Tension's actually almost already at 75%. So, unlike, if you remember from our South Africa campaign, we didn't see the, the Vilkri break out until almost the end of 1940. We could see the second Vilkri break out early 39 this time around, which... I mean, the question is, do I want to push that... Do I want to pull the trigger now? Germany, how many units do you have? Do we know? 80 to 176, we're at 150. Have you... What have you guys done? Splendid Isolation, fantastic. Splendid Isolation means they will not join the Reichsback, will not join the Entente. So France has a secure border to their south. I do... I do not believe that they should... Or there's any real way for them to get involved. It's like, I might be wrong on that, but I don't think I am. Okay, Yemen is joined the Cairo Pact. Follow this up with the 1940 Tactical Bomber. Of course, this is going down by, what, 0.5% every month? Yes. It still sets a minimum of 25. Sweden has joined the Reichs Pact. Wait, when did Sweden join the Reichs Pact? January 4th. Okay, it just happened, apparently. Okay. 0.8%, really.
I see any other major events here. Not really. But if right now I decided to do the road to war, it would unlock both me and France's ability to declare war on Germany. So I think I, I think I will do it. Syria has already fallen. Okay, I think the Ottomans are gonna have a pretty good. They're already pushing their way into the Sinai Peninsula. Okay, so good work there, uh, Egypt. Did you increase world tension by four percent? I thought it was five, but four is okay. Who needs supplies here? You guys do. Are we not building up those railroads? I mean, we are, but it, it probably is not gonna. It's gonna take a little bit. Because we have, we have a lot of railroads to get through. Okay, there is 800 for the railway gun. Okay, they are pretty expensive. I'm going to even throw this above. Put this on three, put you on five. If we have, if we have so many rifles, I'm okay taking this down a little bit. Here, 500. We're gonna take you down by one. 900 aircraft. I feel my my mouse is going like crazy today. I don't know why. It's, you can you can see it kind of jittering a bit. I think this should be okay. He died on the 31st of July. Okay, so it takes like six months. Okay, it's it's pretty expensive. Okay, there's a Ron getting involved in their war as well. Technology to research. I mean, class F. I see. Are we even building any trains? We're not. Actually, wait. We might be. Railway gun. No, we're actually not building any trains ourselves. Your armor train. Yeah, I think we'll just wait until the like the war austerity train comes out. Get some of those guys going. Yeah, I think the I think the Ottomans are just going to win. How many units do they have? 15 to 79. That's actually that's pretty good for them, actually. Way more, I think, they, than the Ottomans typically will have. And the, uh, the Qing having to defeat the Alpha KMT will focus their entire attention on defending government. That'll almost certainly bring them a war with the Japanese, which means that they should stay out of our way for at least a little while. Greater chance being ambitious. 3% of the total population. That's not bad. We're almost, almost at 150. And once we hit 150... Also, this focus is no longer going to get us up to uh, 75. It's going to get us to the 74. Which is definitely a shame. Because the war is not going to be happening as early as I would have hoped. That, that's fine. Okay, we are mobilizing though once again. How many men are we getting per day here? 0.09. Which is, I really wish it just told you what the number was. Because 0.009% of 108 million. What is that number? I will calculate it right here on my very phone. Calculate that. Oh, get rid of this. Okay. 0.00... It's 00... Yeah, okay. Because... That's 1%. Times 108 million. So it should be about 10,000 per day, it looks like. Again, it would be nice if they just told you that number and I didn't have to kind of guess. Okay, six cavalry down here. Okay, we do want to put the cavalry leader on this eventually. Camouflage leader actually is pretty good. Because it means that our units will not get bombed as much. Yeah, we're at 73%. Not quite enough to get this done. We go match mobilization next. Seize Tuva. Okay, I would say that Tuva is not... Is not in Europe. Because Tuva is obviously over here in Mongolia. What is, what is our options here? Seize Tuva... May lead to war Mongolia. Fuck it, do it, man. New York City and Detroit have already fallen, huh? 
You know what? I thought the Canadians would do a really, really bad job. No, they're actually doing fantastic. I think the CSA is going to die very soon. So we'll probably see the, the Canadians maybe back to Pacific States, Pacific, and then they'll go to where the American Union states. America will unify and join the Entente. That's the way this is looking right now from my perspective. But I want to put units on the Mongolian border. I'm going to take half of you for the moment and throw you over here. Oh, so supplies over here actually are pretty bad. I mean, there's not really other, any way we can make that better. Actually, no, that's not true. One of our focuses is to improve the Trans-Siberian Railway. We could think about doing that. Oh, so we have East Turkestan. We actually have an ally in the region that can help us against Mongolia if need be. Will Mongolia give this land up, though? We'll find out in 26 days. Yeah, Karelia, of course. We can only do this after we've done Crush the German Hegemon. That does not have an aggression pack with them. White Ruthenia. Is a neighbor prepared for war? Ukraine can't do. This is not just like go to war with everybody. Let's run German Empire to declare war on Azerbaijan. Rural tension increased by 20. Okay. Also, oh, we're already at a quarter million manpower now. You love to see it. Okay, cool. So we could start getting a lot more units out. You're now fully training up. And you, I'm guessing, are cavalry. Yeah, all of you guys are just going to deploy onto this unit. How many light tanks do we have, by the way? We have 3,000 light tanks, 3,000 trucks. Give me 11 tank divisions right now. That shouldn't even put, like, a major dent in this. 3,000 goes down to 422. That's fine. Absolutely acceptable to me. Those are good numbers, I would say. Okay, Mongolia, I put units over on the Tanatuvan border. You should want to give it up. Also, 165 uh, points here. Do I go straight up to extent conscription? I'm going to say no for right now. Another 10% bonus of research or uh, construction speed. Thoughts like breakthrough heart attack is pretty good. Variability max speed defense. Heart attack armor plus 10%. I don't even know. I don't know who I want. Is there any um, officer that we're looking for? Infantry expert? I mean, come on now. Okay, well, we'll take you as well. We might even then go for tank. Anti-submarine we don't really care about. I mean, entrenchment speed is... I mean, it's good. It, it can be good for sure. But I would prefer just, like, more max entrenchment versus just how fast I can do it. Also, oh, the SRI is eating shit right now. They're doing, they're doing terribly. Oh my god. If they lose like this, one of these two provinces, they're going to be cut in half and are, or certainly are going to lose at that point. Okay, Philippines are now at war with the Japanese. I just want to see if they'll accept my uh, ultimatum here before we end the episode. Oh, Tibet. Oh, Tibet, Tibet, Tibet. Not great for you. Okay, they just gave it to us. Fantastic. Which means you guys can now redeploy over to the Transmeter border. Thank you for Tanatuva. I think you even gave me this. Did you give me this territory as well? I'm like, no, I think we already have this territory. But with that, I think it's really a good time for us to end this episode. So thanks everybody for watching. My name is Anthony. If you enjoyed, my thumbs up. Not doing, please thumbs down. If you want to subscribe and goodbye.